Hey guys, Marcio here with Hog Addiction Barbecue Team with my buddy Chad Whittington and B&B Charcoal. We're gonna cook today a whole hog, but first we're gonna show you a very, very economic way for you to build a pit on your backyard. We're gonna cook a whole hog in it, impress your friends, follow me. So what I wanna go over with you guys, it's the list of materials we're gonna to need to build this pit. We're gonna need about 75 blocks. We're gonna need three bags of sand. A Couple of these guys right here, you can find these already pre-cut at Home Depot. Every bit of these materials came straight from Home Depot and you can pick them all up on the shelf. Um, these guys right here are used for driveway to retain the two by four when people pour concrete. They're super strong, so we're gonna use this as our cross members here. And then uh, we've got three pieces of sheet metal that we're gonna use for our lid and also a blanket to go in between to provide some insulation. Let's get to build this thing. Um, first thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna use that door. The, the whole idea here is to develop a small little door in here. So a little trick that I do with this, it's very simple. If you wanna use a saw at home, you can. I just typically just break this block like this and we're gonna go right there. It's important to leave a little bit of lead way on this block so it holds the block that goes across. And then here we go, let's break another one. Look at that. And now we get some more blocks across right here. See, the whole purpose of keeping this amount of uh, brick left so it holds this, this is our door. We're gonna feed, constantly feed charcoal through here. We're gonna go about one more high and then we're gonna put this bars on it. All right, before it gets too high, we're gonna pour our sand in. What that sand's gonna do is gonna provide us with a little bit of insulation. That kind of took my breath away, working a little faster. Um, and so, basically on these two corners, to keep the charcoal from being directly placed on the ground, we're gonna pour some sand and we're gonna spread them out. Another great, great advantage to have the sand. Whole hog, there's a whole lot of juice in it. So as that fat start rendering, it's gonna start dripping on that sand and going right through it. Less of a chance of catching on fire too. So there's a quick little tip for you. Um, I've got about two and a half inches of sand. Uh, you can put more, but that's perfect. That's basically what we use. We've always been successful with. There you go. Now it's time to put those bars in. So next, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna recess this bars down, probably half away to this block. And what that's gonna do, is gonna help us with the height of this pit. So if we don't do that, what would happen is by adding just one block, the pit will be here. And when you're trying to cook a hog, well, you have to add another pit. So what we're gonna do is just lower this rack system to where you don't have a real high pit. I'm pretty tall, but not everybody's as tall and trying to reach in there and baste. And even if you're not cooking a hog, we can use this pit to cook brisket, whole, I mean, uh, shoulder or chickens. You want it to be able to reach in there. So what we're doing here by recessing this bars, one more block will be done, put the lid on it, 
fire up and cook. So for this cutting, I'm using a grinder, just a five inch grinder. Now, I recommend you use glasses. I'll be cutting away from, from me, so it's gonna be throwing the dust away. Uh, this is just how I cut it. Wear glasses if you're doing this, it'll be better. So let's see how this one goes. Here. There you go. So next, what I'm gonna use here, this is one of one of my racks from one of my smokers. Uh, you can use expanded metal, you can use any kind of grate on top. Uh, needs to be strong enough to hold, you know, your size of your hog. So we're just repurposing, trying to, you know, if you've got something laying around that can work, take your measurements. Uh, Chad and I are gonna lay this over here. And boom. Now we're gonna put another layer of blocks in here, and then it's time for or top to get a, our insulation done. There's a little quick tip. I'm gonna take this little broken pieces and I'm just gonna chunk them on the corner where my charcoal is gonna go. What this is gonna do is when I throw my charcoal on top, it's gonna help retain that heat and consistency on your pit right there. Don't have to throw them away. There you go. Make as square as you can, close all your seams so you can keep all your smoke in there. So here, what we're gonna do for our lid to keep some air flow and some oxygen coming in. This is very simple, very homemade. Uh, you, can, you can use an angle arm, put it in here if you wanted to make it fancier, but typically I'll just set a block right here and when it's time to open up, we'll just slide in and slide it out. Super simple. So we'll probably run something like that. The fire will never get on this plywood because our placements are on the very inside on each corner. Got two of them. So what I have here is we're gonna put two, two of these down first. We're gonna overlap them a little bit. And so this is gonna work. The corrugated part of the lid, it's gonna help exhaust all the, the smoke out and it works perfect. It maintains temperature. We're gonna be running this somewhere around 275 and 300. And so we don't have to have some other escape in here. We're gonna throw this blanket on it. Then we're gonna put another piece on. To the whole purpose of this blanket is to just keep, keep the heat. Come over this way a little bit. It'll serve as an insulation. And we're gonna put this one in the middle. And we're ready to get cooking.